Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The thing that we're going to address today is the uh, engine coolant temperature. Today it's actually it's actually not too bad. Running at 194 degrees or 196 according to my SDS programmer. So if you're running in traffic, the car could actually run quite warm, especially if you're stopped at a stoplight for an extended period of time if you're waiting for a train. So, you know, in a lot of stop and go traffic in the summer when you're cruising, the temperatures could reach that 196 degree range. And I just want to bring it down to a more acceptable level, you know, maybe down to that 180, 185, or even a little cooler if possible. Uh, when I drag race the car, I could hot lap it. Temperatures were never an issue. Uh, but also I wasn't running a hood. So obviously with the hood on the car now, that holds a lot of heat in. So uh, I'd like to go with the Contour twin fan setup because they obviously have a lot more airflow. But one problem we might run into is the Contour fan setup, it's about three and a half inches deep. So we'll see if we can make that work. As of lately, I've been running this Flexolite fan the number one two three fan it's you know it definitely doesn't have enough cfm to keep up with the type of setup that we have right now but the biggest dilemma is the space between our radiator and the blower pulley it's just roughly three inches and the in the uh, contour setup is about three and a half so what we're going to do I took out my air conditioning condenser because I'm not using it yet. And the dilemma I had was the wires were, the, the rad was up against the wires over here and we're gonna end up doing a wire tuck. And we're gonna attempt to move the radiator closer to the rad support. As you can see, I had a ton of room in there. That's just over an inch, inch and a quarter. We're going to bring that up even closer. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to lower the radiator enough to get this to tuck underneath, but you, we have to have at least a eighth to a quarter inch gap just for to keep things happy. But definitely going to gain a half an inch just from that. I wanted to get OEM cooling fans because I think there's a chance that, you know, it'll be an older, higher mileage car from a Contour or a Mystique. I think even some of the late 90s Cougars had the same twin fan set up. But there's a good chance that the, the motors are going to be a little beefier than maybe a set of fans that you can get, uh, like, for brand new. Uh, I saw a video on YouTube. One uh, gentleman had a video. He compared OEM fans to brand new uh, aftermarket ones that were like a, a contour replacement. And he says, yeah, there's a big difference between the airflow. So cross my fingers, the fans will be in good shape. And they're supposed to pull close to 4,000 CFM. That's probably about 2,800 more CFM than what we have right now, and this car can use it. Uh, when you're on the highway driving, it, it's fine. Just that in-town stop-and-go traffic. I don't race the car as much as I used to. I used to just race it for fun. So let's face it, we have these cars to enjoy them, and who wants to be stuck in traffic watching the temperature gauge uh, go up? And uh, we also added a oil temperature gauge. I've had it for a while that I wanted to install and I tried it out today it works great it's hovering around I think 210 215 degrees uh, normal driving if I'm stop and go in the city it's about 212 214 215 and I go out in the highway it goes down to about 210 obviously the gauge can have a little bit of fluctuation to actual temperature but it's an indicator if you do have an internal engine failure that temperature is going to spike so it's a good time to shut it down before you cause any other damage. And if you have to take your engine apart, like let's face it, it costs money to get uh, blocks machined and buy new parts. So if you can salvage what you have without 
having a catastrophic failure, that's always a good thing. One other interesting thing that we did, we had the headlight, we had a wire harness for the headlights that came across from the driver's side over to the passenger side. And it was actually sitting right in this area. So when I wanted to move the radiator ahead, this wire harness that I, I had in place, it was preventing me from moving the radiator ahead. So I ended up taking all the wires from the alternator down there. And then there was a one plug on the yellow wire that goes up to the firewall. I undid that. I undid the wires for there's a horn on this side, the headlights and the park light. And I fished everything through. And I actually, I, uh, I fished it back and I ended up putting it on the bottom of the fiberglass bumper. Yeah, you can see it right there. We'll focus in on that. So now it's still it's still just above or just behind the bumper. It's not in the way for airflow. It's not in the way for anything else. It really cleaned up the upper rod support and that's going to make uh, make it a little bit easier for getting the radiator a bit further ahead. I'll be able to get about half an inch ahead up here and then the bottom will be doing the most work to get it to move ahead. But yeah, relocating that wire down to in this area, that made a big difference for us as well. Okay, here's our contour fans. They do have some extra wiring for the air conditioning setup that's in this harness, so I'm gonna remove some of that. These fans are 3.5 inches deep. And another factor is my dual pass radiator is 22 and three quarters between these two end tanks. This is 24 inches. So we're gonna see what we can do to get this to fit on there and look proper and most importantly function really well. First thing to do is knock off all the little brackets on the side that they had. Now we can go and set it over the radiator and see what other provisions we have to make. I think if we can cut a notch in here, we notch this and then notch this a little bit here to get it to sit down so this is even. We've got probably three quarters of an inch right there. Or even just, you know, move it up. It's not going to make too much of a difference. But we're going to do something here with the shroud to get full coverage. So I might slice it and then get some plastic and epoxy it in. Figure out something just to bring this edge, this edge, bring it right down to here. You know, so here's an update on what we did at the bottom of the radiator. We added this piece of aluminum at the bottom with the frame and the rivets. So essentially all we did was we extended the bottom of the shroud down to the bottom of the radiator. So we have this aluminum angle iron that we riveted to the shroud and just did that in two places. So it bolts up here, up here, and then at the bottom there is one, two, there's three bolts that fasten at the bottom. We have our probe for the uh, cooling fans, the thermostatic probe. It goes through this hole into the radiator and uh, it's just sitting up in here. We tidied up some of the wiring. I have a larger maxi fuse in there. Added some wire plugs. Um, I made these brackets to hold the top of the radiator and uh, these are a performance world part that are made for aluminum ra radiators to hold it in place. I did that on both sides and as we come around here's our fancy 
recovery tank that we made so the radiator overflows into the bottom of the recovery tank here's our overflow for the recovery tank you can see a video that we made for this uh, tank so we'll go down to the base of the radiator we made the uh, new brackets to mount the lower part of the radiator with the rubber brackets and the insulators just so for vibration and so the rad is sitting probably a good inch inch and a half ahead you can see our brackets in the bottom how it's mounted it's the same on either side so our radiator we moved it ahead on the top and in on the bottom and it gave us a ton of room for the supercharger install and this is like I said this is a 10 rib belt setup so that's how we finished it off all right here's the update on the cooling fans today it's a nice hot day it's 29 30 degrees Celsius about 85 degrees Fahrenheit hey guys I'm really impressed with this dual cooling fan setup I got engine temperatures of they're bouncing between 167 deg degrees Fahrenheit and 180 I haven't saw it go above 180 yet the hood is on the car it's a hot day got the windows down and definitely worthwhile to, well, to have those the dual fan set up on there my temperature gauge was always around the A and the L. Now it's, when I'm cruising and at a stoplight, it's usually around the M, so it's definitely lower. So the uh, factory fan setup, you know, they definitely have decent motors in them. If you go to a, a wrecking yard, I'm willing to get a OEM fan setup because I'm sure the uh, brand new aftermarket or uh, factory replacement fans are fine but highly recommended for any fox body or anything else that can uh, use it can't say enough good things thanks for watching and hope this helps you out